um I, you know i'll go one by one first when you are attempting the gmat uh, focus you're going to come across the order of sections you have you have you have your three sections you have quant you have verbal and you have uh, di and now you have to select the order in which you uh, want to take them of course you can take them in any order and there is one break available to you for 10 minutes in between any two of the sections right so now uh you know, people have this question, okay, what order should I take it in? I don't know if you guys know this or not, but um, GMAC has said that the test is question adaptive, of course, like within a section, you know, as you keep doing well, you'll keep getting harder and harder questions, just like GMAC Classic, great. But it is a tiny bit section adaptive as well. And now what do I mean by that? One, what do I mean by section adaptive? And what do I mean by tiny bit? So section adaptive means that let's say I'm done with the section. Let's say I'm, I started with quant first and I'm done with quant. Next, I go on to verbal. Then the first question I get in verbal will depend on how I did in quant. GMAC has said that it is a bit section adaptive. Now, why a tiny bit? Because only your first two, three questions are going to depend on how you did in the previous, uh, previous section. So let's say I did really well in quant. My first, second, maybe two or three questions of verbal are going to be slightly higher than the medium level that I would have expected. For example, if I say, uh, you know, my first question of a section should be medium, this would be slightly higher than medium. Mind you, it is not going to be very high, but it's going to be slightly higher than medium. So then uh, what does this mean? It, you know, then people have this confusion that if it is section adaptive, then should I take my strong section first, then in my weak section, I'm going to start off with tougher questions or should I take my weak section first Then my strength, I'll start off with easier questions, you know, what makes sense, et cetera, right? So, um, so you know, think about this. Let's say I start with a strong section. Yeah, I, I start with quant, I'm very good at quant. I, I did brilliantly. I'm weak at verbal. I start with verbal. I get a question which is a little, uh, you know, higher, not too much, not too much, but a little higher than medium difficulty. Yeah. Let's say I don't do well on that question because it is beyond my capability. Fine. Another question. I don't do well on that either. Doesn't matter. The software is going to very quickly then, you know, bring the level down. Then it will start giving me medium questions, which I'll be able to uh, do well on. Then, you know, it, maybe it'll go up, down a little bit, a little bit. Then, of course, the rest of the section is going to be based on how I perform in my verbal section only. Mind you, only the first two, three questions uh, are impacted by the previous section. And the reason why they're impacted is because, you know, we, there are fewer questions in GMAT now. So then they want to make the most of every question. And what they find is that usually people who have worked hard at, let's say, quant have worked hard at verbal also. So they are likely to do well at verbal also. So they feel that if you've done really well at quant, let's start you at a higher level because it is more likely that you'll do really well. So why base those first two questions starting you at medium level, right? So uh, let's say it is, it is not a strength of yours, even if it is not a strength of yours, yeah? Let's say you messed up your couple of uh, initial questions because they turned out to be much higher than you know, what you were comfortable with. Doesn't matter. The software has brought the level down. Now the software knows what exact, you know, what your comfort is in that particular section. And um, because those questions were much more difficult than what you are comfortable with, you're not going to get penalized too much, right? You know, this is true for classic also, that you don't get penalized much for hard questions. You get penalized if you get your easy questions wrong, okay? And because those questions were harder than your level, you're not going to get penalized much. Of course, it's not going to impact. Now think about what happens if I take verbal first. Let's say verbal is the is, is my, um, you know, I, I'm uh, is something that I'm not really good at. Yeah? Verbal is my section that I find difficult. So I'm not going to perform very well on that. So, all right, I've done verbal. I did not perform very well. Maybe the software thing's okay. So this person, you know, it's not going to perform very well in the entire GMAT. Doesn't matter. Let's see. And then the software gives me a question. I start with quant. My first question is a little easier than medium. Yeah, a little easier than what I would perhaps get if it were the first question of the test. All right. <clears throat> of course, it's easier. I'm good at quant, so that I'm going to be able to do it. 
I come to the second question. Again, it's a little easier, but I'm good at one, so I'll be able to do it. So then, the, of course, the software will adjust the difficulty level. Now it has gone up to medium questions. I'm doing them well. It has gone up to, you know, difficult questions. The software has realized that I'm good at want. Fine. Now, because I got my easier questions right, my first, second questions right, but they were easy questions. Am I going to get a big bonus score because I got my easy questions right? No, right? Um, it, it doesn't matter. Those two, three questions are not going to make much of an impact because they were easy questions, right? I got the easy questions right. When I'm getting the harder questions right, that is when the software realizes, hey, she's good, fine, good. Let's give her a good score. Do you understand that? So in the overall scheme of things, all the software is trying to do is make the best use of the data that it has. And that is why adjusting the first few questions of the next section, but Overall, it does not matter. In the section, you will get what you know your what your skill level is. Yeah, whether you take quant first and verbal second, or verbal first and quant second, it makes absolutely no difference as far as your overall score is concerned. Yeah, and that is the reason your order of sections should be what you are most comfortable with. Uh, it cannot be defined by me or anybody else. Look, you have to see that, okay, when I take one first, you know, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm very sharp at the beginning of the test, for example. So then, and I know that I have to focus on every word in quant because, you know, for example, if I miss that X is, X is a positive integer and I miss the positive aspect of it or something, then a, my entire question will go for a toss. So obviously I have to be extremely careful. And if there are a couple of cases, and if I miss one of the cases, then you know my answer will go. So then obviously you know that you have to be extremely sharp. You have to be in verbal also, but still, I mean, you know, you have a little more lead over there. So then um, you you uh, you decide whether quant is the right section for you to begin with. Then after the, but I would suggest that quant and verbal should be together, there should be a break and DI should be separate because the amount of effort, the amount of data you have to go through in DI, it, you know, it, you, it's going to be very difficult for you to, let's say, have quant separate and then DI and verbal separate. This is true for most people. Of course, it's still possible that you are comfortable with, let's say, quant and then a break and then a verbal and DI, that anything is possible. Obviously, and GMAT focus gives you all that flexibility. But still, for most people, it is better either to start with DI, then have the break, then have quant and verbal together, or let's say have quant verbal or verbal quant, whatever they are comfortable with, then have a break and then have DI. Yeah. Now, how do you figure out what is best for you? Again, for every person, it will be different. You need to take mocks with two or three different configurations. Yeah. So, um, you know, see what feels best to you what what would you like to do so let's say you know and and figure those two three configurations out if, if maybe three of them and then you have six official mocks and of course you can reset them as well so in your let's say first attempts of each you try out let's say for two mocks you try out one particular sequence for two mocks try out another sequence for two mocks try out the third sequence yeah do not decide which sequence you want based on the score because the score is going to be affected by a lot of other factors just because i got 10 points higher in this sequence that means this is a better sequence for me that is not true of course yeah but think about which seemed the best yeah where did i have the maximum energy where was i feeling that i just want to run away where was i feeling like i don't want to continue with the test right? Think about those aspects. Think about where you felt the most comfortable and decide your order of the sections based on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions? Any